Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome once again to uh, the Victory Apostolic Church webcast. We welcome you on this Sunday morning, which is May the 3rd, 2020. Hope you're having a great Sunday in the Lord. Uh, I uh, miss being in the place of worship with you. It's so good to be in the place of worship, but I'm looking forward to being able to worship together with you. I first of all want to greet our Victory Apostolic Church congregation, which I pastor. You're the greatest people in the world. I appreciate you, love you, miss you, and uh, I am excited to be able to come to you by means by webcast, but it's nothing like seeing you pers- in person, uh, your smiling faces and your happiness and just our fellowship. We welcome those guests and friends uh, by webcast. I appreciate all of the uh, fine uh, comments, and uh, we, we've received emails, numerous emails and uh, messages regarding our online services. We appreciate that. Uh, we're going to continue to do so uh, this past week. Uh, our uh, governor, Governor Edwards, uh, he extended the stay-at-home order until May the 15th. And uh, this pastor, this church, we're going to honor that. Uh, we're going uh, we're, we're to do what's asked of us to do. Uh, with that, I think it's important that we uh, do that. The Bible teaches us to obey uh, our uh, local authorities, those who are authority over us, and uh, we're going to do that. Uh, I think it's the, the honorary thing. I think it's the God thing to do. While others may differ in, in the opinion of that, uh, I, I, I'm going to do that. I believe that we need to be a witness. We need to be a light. The Bible says, Blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall see God. And we are peacemaking people. And uh, when the 16th rolls around, he makes his decision again. Uh, we're going to see where that, that, that stands. I know there will be a phase one and phase two. And we're going to honor whatever it is that needs to be honored. We are going to get to the place where we can worship again safely and together. And it's going to be a time of celebration. I'm anticipating that. Looking forward to that, and until then, we're going to keep reaching out, we're going to keep ministering, and this is our way of doing it, which is online. I feel it's the safest, the best way, and uh, we just want to reach somebody, we want to encourage somebody and touch somebody. Uh, We're going to go to the Word of the Lord uh, today in the book of Psalms 127 and verse 2, and while I'm on that same note, we have had so many uh, request and so many uh, responses through a webcast. We have never reached as many people as we have ever reached uh, that I can ever remember uh, uh, being pastor of this church or when my dad was pastoring this church. It's unbelievable the people that have been tuned in and that's a blessing. That's excitement because uh, we're here to encourage and lift up. I thank you for everything that you do and uh, it's greatly appreciated. May the Lord Bless you. The book of Psalms 127 and 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. I would like to just preach on the thought, God grants rest. God grants rest. I find rest in the Lord. I find peace in the Lord. It's nothing like a good night's rest. Uh, Can you remember the last time you rested? I mean really rested during the day. Sundays are very special. And as I go back and uh, reflect on Sundays and times past, it's my favorite day of the week because it's the day of worship. Uh, It's the day that we worship the Lord. It's a day of rest because I can focus uh, simply on God and the work of the Lord. There's other things that we deal with during a week's time, our work, our school, uh, other things, but I put it aside and seek the Lord first. I put Him first, and we don't forsake the assembling together of God's people. The Bible teaches us to be faithful, and so it's my day of rest in the Lord. And so I think of Sundays, they're special for rest from work and from uh, things, and we primarily focus our family, and it's a time of family, and it's church and fellowship with one another. Uh, On holidays, there's often a lot more 
uh, entertaining than there is rest. Uh, we gather together with families on Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I find myself uh, just tired from just being around family because it's always entertaining and it's always just conversation, which I enjoy, I love to do, but I, I can find myself at the end of the day, at night, uh, falling into the bed and just like I'm so tired, I need rest. And so rest is a part of God's design. For us, it is nothing uh, or not something that we should push off. Your body tells you to rest. You need to adjust accordingly. There is a rest that we find in God. I have found myself to rest during this crisis. I have found my uh, time to rest in God's presence when all of this is going around. And I rest in, in, in the Word and I rest in prayer and I rest and I take uh, that peace that comes from uh, just uh, getting in the presence of the Lord. And so we should not push off rest, but rather it is a practice that we all need to learn. We need to learn how to, how to rest more. Many jobs provide uh, people with days off. Uh, they're called personal days. And some, some people might sleep in on those days and use those days to go for a walk or maybe you use those personal days to go to the doctor's office or uh, maybe somewhere that you've got to go that's uh, family uh, uh, a need or some something. And uh, we do things that uh, we find rest in, getting to do the things that you enjoy, reading a book, playing music, uh, uh, just doing things with the family. Uh, some kind of outside thing, maybe it's a barbecue or something like that. There's rest because you're away from the, the difficulty, the, the work, and uh, uh, all the strenuous effort that you put into day-to-day to day, uh, life. And so I often find myself accomplishing uh, less uh, sometimes when I put aside some things to rest, but you need that rest to get you motivated, give you strength to do what needs to be done the days ahead. Uh, my body doesn't do well when I just keep going. I have to have rest, and my body tells me that. I have no peace because my mind is weary too. Uh, sometimes it's better just go to bed, get up, and, and start fresh. Um, I, I find that uh, when I allow myself to have some downtime, I often come back to my tasks uh, with a renewed energy. And so this, again, as I have spoke often about, this is only, this is a test of our faith. I like what somebody said. This is not persecution of the church. I know some people are tired of hearing that, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. It's not persecution of the church. Uh, I take this quote from Brother Anthony McCool there in Knoxville, Tennessee. He said it's just an inconvenience, and I like that, and I want to give props to him with that. I think that's very true. Uh, this is just an inconvenience. People want to make it out of more, as my, my grandfather my dad used to say, make a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, this is not persecution. This is just an inconvenience. And so during this testing, during this trying, I'm resting up because there is going to be a renewed energy. There's going to be a renewed excitement that is going to take place when we can gather in these pews, we can come to this altar, when we can strike up the first song and we begin to worship the Lord. I'm telling you, there's going to be a great time of celebration. And that's what I'm excited about. Uh, I, I, I'm excited. I think about that old bear that hibernates all winter long. And he longs for uh, the springtime when he can come out of that cave and he can, can walk about and he can do as he pleases. I'm ready to come out of this hibernation. Some people's like, well, uh, I'm just going to come out. Well, you do what you want to do, but I'm going to do what I think is the right thing to do. I'm going to do, uh, I'm, during my time, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And I'm going to, when I come out, I'm going to come out celebrating. I'm going to come out stronger than ever, amen. And it's going to be a renewed energy. Taking time to rest is a way of saying that not everything in life is up to you. It's remembering that God holds all things in the palm of his hand. He provides everything, yet our busy work puts our attention back on what we do instead of on what he's done. Now, the book of Job 11 and 18, if you have your Bibles and you'll turn with me there, and thou shalt be secure because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in 
safety. Having hope will give you courage. We are protected and we find rest in his safety. We do things to keep us safe, but I find rest and hope in his safety. Having hope will give you courage, no doubt. We, when we rest, we are placing ourselves back in God's hands and having hope in his provisions. My hope is in God's provisions today. That's my hope. Uh, I, I, God grants us rest through his presence. Now, I know that physical rest is so important, but I want you to understand what I'm really talking about today. I am really talking about, I'm talking about a spiritual rest today. I talk about a spiritual rest that you can only find in God. And so having hope, having peace gives you rest, a mental rest. It gives a physical rest. But we are protected and we find rest in God. I find rest in the Lord. I find hope in the Lord. And when we rest, we're placing ourselves in God's hands. Many times we have said that uh, when you give something to God, whatever it is you're going through, that it's no longer yours, but it's God's. I'm thankful today that I can find rest, that I can find provision. Won't you set aside some time today to find rest in the Lord? You say, Brother David, are you, do you mean get in the bed and pull the covers over my head? And No, I'm talking about why don't you get that blanket of hope, that blanket of peace, that word of God is that pulling that blanket over your head, that rest, that comfort. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost is a comforter. It's a promise. I'm thankful for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's nothing like uh, being in the comfort of your, of your home. Uh, you, would like, you would rather be in the comfort of your home than standing before maybe thousands of people. You probably get kind of nervous. This past week, my wife had an appointment, and many of you have had to do some of these teleappointments different from what we're accustomed to doing. And she was FaceTiming, and she had uh, her phone there, and uh, she was uh, speaking with the doctor, and the doctor was speaking with her. My son has done this, and, 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 and it's different. It's, it's something you, you feel awkward because it's something that's never been done before, but you're in the comfort of your own home, but still it's odd. It is odd having to have church uh, in the comfort of our home. This is what we're used to. We're comfortable with our home, our, our, our dwelling, our setting. But it's just not the same as being in the Lord's house. It's kind of like we, we're, we're in our house, but we're not in the Lord's house. But it's not about the building. It's all about the Lord, the presence of God. But we appreciate this wonderful house. And I can't wait to come back to the Lord's house. But while you are in the comfort of your homes, I want you to take peace today. I want you to have church in your house. Read the word. Pray. Talk to God. Rest in his presence. God grants you rest. Your rest is only going to come in the Lord. Let's pray together if we would. I know there's many needs. And whatever your need is uh, today, God has an, he, he, wants to, he wants to supply your need. Let's pray. Thank you today, God. Thank you for your people. Thank you for this Sunday morning. Thank you for whoever's watching today. God, I'm asking, God, that you will allow us to have rest and peace in these days, God, uh, in the days ahead. God, we know that without, without you, that all things, all things are possible, God, through you. God, without you, there's not anything that's possible. We must have you in our lives today, God. God, I love you. I want to please you, God. I want to find rest. God, I, I pray that somebody hadn't been sleeping good. I pray, God, that somebody's been just struggling. There's depression. There's all kinds of problems. There's all kinds of situations. There's concerns. God, fears, God. I'm asking you give them rest today, God. Let somebody find rest in your presence, God. We ask this in your wonderful name. We ask, Lord, you bless our people. Bless those who are tuned in. Bless all the churches. Bless our, our workers, care workers, our local authorities. God, the police department, everybody involved, hospitals, God, bless them, touch them, give them rest and the physical God as well to care and take care of those who are hurting today. We ask this all in your wonderful, your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. I appreciate you so very much. We look forward to being with you online tonight. Have a great day in the Lord.